when we get on here, I'm like, who's calling from the farthest away? But I guess that depends on where you're at. All right. What a great looking group. It's 2020, the year of perfect vision. We're almost halfway through 2020. I, I wrote the date at the top of my iPad today. And uh, <coughs> we're in May, what is it, May 11th? And uh, June yeah. is the halfway mark. Isn't that amazing? It really is. It's, uh, we're halfway through this year. It's gone by so fast. Yes. <laughs> hey, hey, Dave, Jer Jerry was on um, one of our team training calls and he said, he said, he said, I'm going to treat June as if it was January. Mm. And I'm going to run into June like, like 2020 is just getting started. You know, just, just trip wiring your brain. Yeah. And you when you got to do that, I mean, yeah. if you want to have a success, right, create that momentum, you have yeah. to do like that. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I felt it immediately. Like, yeah, you know. <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah. It's not hard to bring Willie into that vibration. Yeah, yeah. let's go. <laughs> Born to be in that vibration. It's where stuff gets done. <laughs> that's, you know, that's what I did prior to learning these principles that we're learning on this Zoom. That's how I was in life. And I would go after things like that. And then I would get to a point where it didn't matter what I did. It, I would just get stuck. And I didn't give up easily. You know, I continue to have that intestinal fortitude, which means you just keep trying to make it happen. And not trying, you're like, you're doing everything you can possibly do to make it happen. And uh, the law is a, je a jealous mistress, I guess you could say. If you do not put yourself in alignment with the law, it doesn't matter how much you think you deserve it, no matter how good of a person you are, uh, no matter how hard your prayers are, um, you just stay stuck. And I believe that God in his infinite wisdom for me, because he loves me as an individual, knows how, how lighted to make that path, right? Or how not lighted to make that path. Like there's some things that Dave needs to go through before I bring the teacher in. Before the teacher shows up for Dave, there's some things that he's got to go through first. Totally believe that. I, I still believe that <clears throat> my personal decisions are the ultimate. They make up the ultimate. And it's not that God was had something that he wanted me to do that only, like, he had the final say. I don't believe that at all. I don't believe he has the final say in what I do. If he does, then he's doing a pretty terrible job in the world in general. If he has the final say in how everybody's life is going to be. Because there's a lot of bad things happening out there that I'm sure he doesn't take credit for. Right? And those people that are committing bad things, like on a very grievous level, are no less important than me. They're no less important to me to God. So our personal factor, there's a huge personal factor. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's just a matter of where we decide to put our focus and our energy and what's important to us. And uh, you guys are unmuted, so if you're having background noise. Um, so uh, the personal factor, I think I read a book called that, The Personal Factor. And uh, that's, that's a great moment in anybody's life when they get led when when they when they do open themselves up to the right information and uh they choose to act on it um that is a great day so let me just uh, i'm going to pull up the white pad the ipad here um and i'm just wondering too what people maybe say if you if you share with us what state you're in and what city like we're opening up here in St. George. It's almost like it's back to normal. I wouldn't say it's 100% normal, but it's almost like it is. Um, I wouldn't be surprised right now if gyms are opening back up. I haven't seen, I haven't checked to see if the gyms are opening. 
Stores are closing a little earlier than they used to, but some of them are still open till eight or nine. But the stores that were typically open later, they're closing at six. Banks, you have to use the drive-throughs, uh, but the banks never shut down. There's probably a few banks that you could walk into. Um, the one that's closest to me, I go to the drive-through. Um, the, the traffic on the street looks as busy as it's ever looked at this point. Um, so I wouldn't say it's 100% back to normal, uh, maybe 75, 80%. If the gyms opened up, I know restaurants are opening up and it's limited seating. I haven't been to a restaurant, um, but I know they're open. Uh, what I'm else? in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and, and Minnesota is still pretty much closed down. So the stuff that you would normally go to on a day-to-day -day basis, you can't do. Your life is not back to a norm. Minimal shopping, big box stores only, no restaurants, no small businesses are open. Salons are closed, gyms are closed. Yeah, salons are open here. I know that was a big one. You know, that's a big thing out there. Salons are open, fingernails are getting done. Um, okay, so Minneapolis, uh, is there a lot of traffic on the street or is it? I, I would say more than there was four weeks ago, but it's still, so, Com very much less than it used to be when I was um, commuting, much less. Yeah, like I, I heard somebody say once, if I didn't watch the news, I wouldn't know anything was wrong as far as the people they communicate with closely. Like people weren't going to the hospital in an unusual way, those types of things. They said, if I didn't watch the news, I wouldn't know. So uh, I would say that kind of around here, you would just think that this is the norm down around here that nothing was going on. But in Minnesota, if you were to visit and somebody came in, they'd be like, oh, something's up here. Yeah. Okay, all right, good to know. Anybody else? California is still completely locked down. Ridiculous. <laughs> I talked to my mom yesterday for uh, yeah. Mother's Day and she lives in Anaheim and and uh, yeah, she says everything's pretty locked down. My, My family and I went hurts. on an illegal hike yesterday up behind Shaver Lake. There was, I've never seen, it's a huge lake. We were literally in the middle of nowhere and there's not one fishing boat on the lake. You get a $5,000 fine for a paddleboard. Oh, really? Yeah. So there was not one person anywhere near the lake. It's just ridiculous. That's the best place to social distance. 5,000 yeah. feet elevation. <laughs> okay. Well, our parks are open and they are fishing and people are hiking and um, okay, Southern Utah, I mean, St. George is a pretty big town now, but it's still, it's not like a Minneapolis, not even close. My sister and her husband wanted to come over and do a movie night. And I said, okay, we were kind of kidding, but I said, park in the business parking lot that's behind our townhouse, and then go between the two pine trees and jump the fence. Army crawl to the patio door and we'll let you in. And I mean, I was kidding, but... Um, it almost I mean, she, does feel that way because we do yeah. have people that will tell on you if they think you're doing something wrong. Okay. Masks are not mandatory here. Uh, if you go to a doctor's office or something like that, and I think Costco nationwide made masks mandatory like a week ago. I'm, I'm in the rebel state. Which state is that? That's I know Georgia. Nevada has the rebels, the That's running Georgia. rebels. That's Georgia. Georgia. Yeah, so but things are, you know, traveling back down to Atlanta is still not as heavy as it has been, and restaurants are limited seating. Uh, I've been to a salon to have my hair done, which, you know, they've they got restrictions of what they're doing, and it's by appointment only, so you just can't walk in. So they're they're controlling things. It can be done. Uh, the hardware stores are like, those are one of the most packed through this whole thing, like Lowe's and Home Depot. Mm -hmm. They've been open. The gardening stores have been open here. People are gardening and planting and going to the nurseries. Anybody else before we get started? Yeah. I'm in Scott, I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona, and we have a nail salons and um, restaurants are opening, that sort of thing. But traffic is still low. A lot of people still working from home and all that jazz. So um, it's, it's modular coming in. And some of the department stores are opening now. 
But I think one of the worst things is to uh, tell us to tell on each other, to rat on each other, to teach us that as a, as a culture uh, is a, a horrible thing to bring forward into the pervasive into yeah, you know, yeah so you have to have somebody come over the back fence oh my gosh what are they telling us you know yeah it's kind of a it breaks some principles you know god yeah. principles all right anybody else before we get so i don't want to get political here so that's yeah. you know and i'm not i know you're not diana <laughs> yeah. i agree with you that's yeah goes along the lines of nazi germany and what they how they got the youth involved and in authority and and moral high ground, that kind of thing, superiority. Uh, it's, not, it's shaky ground to be on principle based, principally Dave, based. Dave, this is Mary Jo. Um, in, uh, in Delaware, our governor, uh, I think a couple of days ago said that it, June 1st, they moved another two weeks, you know, back to open up most things. I mean, it's basically, you know, like um, that was said before, you know, like Home Depots and places like that have been open um grocery stores have been open and of course um food delivery places have been open but in and what like walmart's open too but um other than that um they're really i think there are some mavericks people that are just opening their small stores um i i drove by the um this uh tech place uh, uh that does uh you know, technology repairs, like computers and stuff. And, and and he's just got a little storefront. And I noticed that he had his open sign on the other day. So, which is good because, you know, we really depend on that right now. I mean, I mean, we always do, but, you know, the average person now really depends on that, you know, with our kids being schooled um, virtually and all of that. So um, Delaware, it's creeping along and, and, and uh, we we don't have as many incidences of you know we're a very small state, but it's uh, it's mostly in the southern part of the state, and I live in the northern part that um, have has been a hot spot so for the virus. So it's you know I mean it varies, and we do a lot of chicken farming in the south in in in, in that county, and um, there's I mean I've seen prices going up on so many things that, you know, that we have, um, you know, available to us. Um, you know, the meat counters or a lot of meats are coming from Australia. They're not even, you know, they're not even from locals, you know, uh, you know, from within our own country. Uh, so it's, there are a lot of little changes I'm trying to notice so that I also can, you know, like, okay, put that in my toolbox yeah, uh, as yeah. far as talking to people. So, um, but yeah, that's what's happening here. Okay. But there are a lot of cars on the road though, too. It's just odd. I think people yeah. just want to take a drive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you say it's just odd, there are some odd things that are happening. So, okay. Well, that gives me a kind of a good feel for- And gas is cheap. Yeah, right. Gas is really cheap. Yeah. It's $1.71 here. Which I didn't even know. I thought that was high. I didn't know. I'm telling my son, well, I don't know why it's so high. And he's all, no, dad, that's low. <laughs> like, oh, okay. I never pay attention to the gas anymore. It's one of the things that isogenics has been such a blessing. Um, okay, good. I, and that's kind of what I felt uh, and kind of what I had gathered. There's just a lot of inconsistencies. There's some consistencies. And uh, uh, it's not chaos, you guys, though. I mean, when you understand the principles and, and when you look at the bigger picture and if you have a vision, you have your own personal vision that you've tied into that is harmonious with, with God on any level. It doesn't have to be like that typical religious level. But if you're in harmony with God and you have a bigger vision, you don't feel victimized. You don't feel that you're threatened uh, in any, regardless of any scenario. That's why you could walk through, what is it, although I walk through the valley of hell or whatever that saying is, I, I fear nothing. And uh, that's what the, you know, these principles are stronger than anything. And uh, I feel a, a sense of calm and peace. And I see you, Melissa, um, I, a sense of palm, calm and peace and assurance in the vision that I have, because it's not only my vision, it's a vision that's tapping into 
that harmony with the universe, which is progress. And, and so there is that sense of assurance and not a sense of dissatisfaction or, or fear. Um, so I shall fear no evil, right? And uh, the opposite of that is peace. But you've got to work at that. That doesn't just happen. That doesn't just happen, right? And that's what this Zoom is about. So Melissa, we'll go one more and then we'll jump into right into the book. You're muted out. Let me see if I can unmute you. Is it me? Okay, there you go. Okay, I just real quick, uh, to add to the list of things, my daughter had a baby and her husband was deployed halfway around the world and he got, finally they lifted that, uh, a little bit of people to leave the ship, those that were retiring. So she, with that 10 day old, flew to Maryland from Arizona. And that was an gr interesting experience. It was just, they needed to reconnect and everything. So that was kind of, interesting for her to choose that for him to ask her to come and they quarantined together during his two weeks to get off that military ship so she was safe with his uh you know in a quarantine situation with his sister but you know that was a big choice for her to just go it was only 50 people on this huge plane and everyone was super separated so they did a great job of taking care of her and the baby that was yeah. really awesome and i think there's a lot of of uh real life situations that are like that where people are put into a scenario like um maybe i'll just be a little vulnerable when my daughter had cancer she was eight months old and uh we on you know just because of our faith that we had it kept us focused on i guess you could say the upright the 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 good we didn't say, oh, well, what's great about this situation? That's not how we were at that time. We didn't have, we weren't completely ingrained in the mindset that we are now. But just as individuals, Carrie and myself, we just stayed positive, you know, and you took on the challenges one day at a time, but you didn't let the challenges over drown you by staying focused on the bad and the negative and what could happen in a bad way. And it was almost, and there were so many prayers in our behalf that it felt like we were, you know, two feet off the ground, like we were floating as we were walking. We were being carried with that beat awesome. those, um, footprints in the sand. And, you know, I think there's a lot of scenarios where people are like that type of situation, or we know somebody whose daughter came home from uh, one part of the country and um, they had, they had a quarantine part of the family away from the daughter coming home for, I don't know, 12 days or whatever, 14 days. So here she was here in this hometown, but they couldn't see each other. They were like driving by in the car and waving, you know? Um, and it's what do we focus on in those moments? Do we focus on dissatisfaction, things that we could be dissatisfied about? Or can we literally say, now, what's great about this? How can I stay focused on some kind of objective? It may have nothing to do with the situation. That's the empowering part, is that it may, you may have to come up with something totally different to think about. That has, because the more you focus and put a magnifying on the situation, if it's not a great situation, then more than likely you're gonna look for the compelling reasons why not to be happy, why not to be positive, why not to have an awesome attitude in that moment. And circumstances could force you to look at that, but. Ultimately, they can't force you to look on that. You have to make an agreement with the circumstance to allow you to frame up your mind and your thoughts and your images and your feelings and your emotions around that thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting some background noise. Maybe I'll, uh, let me just uh, mute it out and then make it so people can unmute themselves, see if that works. Okay. So, um, so in, in this case, what I was thinking of while you were talking about that, Melissa, sometimes you have to come up with something that's going to distract you from the current circumstances. Something that's totally not even related to it that gives you that higher vibration. Make sense? And, and a conscious, disciplined mind would do that. They would just habit, not habitually do that, but they would consciously do that and not let themselves subconsciously focus on the obstacles and the dissatisfaction. So if I had bills that were coming in and on my blueprint, I have that, you know, I'm making $10,000 a week. 
if that's what I framed up here, but I have late bills coming in. I can't come up with wording around that late bill because it's just gonna dig a deeper and deeper hole. You kind of get on your heels at the ledge of a cliff and you're on your heels with your back to the cliff. Your heels are hanging over the cliff. You just keep feeling like you're being pulled into that, you know, that void whenever you try to come up with wording around the negative circumstances. You can't do that. You've got to totally take it to something else that's totally unrelated. Don't try to go into the money part of your vision, but go to something, if you can, within your blueprint, go to something that's about customers and the awesome results that they're having or something about business people and how they're paying for their kids' college or they're going on awesome vacations. Something within this blueprint that doesn't have to do with money uh, and, and the late bills that you have coming in. Because the more you focus on the money at that point, I have, oh, have $10,000 coming in every week. Your brain's just gonna say, liar, you sit on a throne of lies and you're, you, you got late bills coming in. You're just going to create that, that emotion around that negative thing by focusing on the exact opposite in that moment. There'll be another day that you could come back to this. And you, and you resonate with it and you can feel it and you can create that fantasy, turn it into a fact feeling. But in that moment, it isn't gonna work. So find something else. Now I'll give you a, a, a this is, you know, this is a nugget right here. Totally leave the template and go, if you like looking at new cars, go kick some tires on a lot that have nothing to do with your template. <clears throat> I learned that from a guy named Thatch. He was a real estate, I don't know if you'd call him a broker, but a real estate person. And uh, he would sell big real estate in the cities, like in New York or Chicago. We're talking when he closed a deal, he made $500,000, that kind of money. And he said, if I couldn't get into that state, then I knew I had to get into a happy, agreeable attitude. So I would just, he says, I love cars. Not even for the sake of buying the car and that, that car is going to be mine. I just love to go and be in that environment. So he said, I would just go talk to salesmen and kick tires on car lots. And that raised his mood. It raised his attitude. And so he wasn't necessarily negating what he had on his template. It, and, and the bad thing would be to be negating, to self betraying what's on your template. So if you can stay in a high vibration and not negate this and then come back to it later when you can just fit right into harmony with the vibration around these different points that we made, okay? I do that, I, I'd say, I, I don't know if I do that a lot, I do it very well. I could totally shift my, like squirrel. That's where squirrel comes in really good. It's serving me. You see that, how squirrel could be both bad and good? It gets your attention and you're distracted, but it could distract you in a good way. Right, but I don't stay away from this for too long. Just in this moment, no matter what I do, it's not working out. So I will just totally distract and think about something else that raises, you know, a good vibration within me. Make sense? <clears throat> so whether that's kicking cars, looking at boats, uh, watching something on YouTube, uh, you know, or a good movie, or listen to some good music. And, and not try to get you back in here because it's just like playing ping pong. It just keeps hitting back and forth in your brain and you're not making headway, <clears throat> all right? Um, and Thatch would say, I would see people who would have the, the person who was gonna buy these other salesmen that were in his genre of you know, high-end high real estate. He said, they, it would, just the craziest things would happen where they, the, the person would back out at the last moment. They had it all and they were just, they would build this stress around something's gonna go wrong because this is too good to be true. You know, I'm gonna make half a million dollars on this deal. And uh, he said time and time again, the craziest things would come out of nowhere and they would end up scrapping the deal when it looked like for every reason it was gonna go through, right? And, and that was because of the negating part that goes on. So if while you're doing your template, you're negating it more than you are feeding the fantasy, then just go kick some tires. 
okay? Or whatever that thing is for you. Knitting, and just take your mind off of it, okay? All right, that's some good advice, some good wisdom there. All right, so let's go to the book. Well, and one of the things I wanted to say about dissatisfaction is, I guess the older we get, the less we realize we're in control of other people, especially as parents. And it seems like a lot of people have created amazing things where they weren't this amazing person all through elementary school and junior high and high school and college. They were just this amazing savant. It seems like most people that have created amazing things have happened in their 50s and older because they just tend to let go of the control of other people. And, uh, you know, uh, I think there's some things set up in our society and expectations of what our kids do and who they become. I've never placed a dream on my kids. I have bought into their dreams that they've had, but I've never placed an expectation. I, when I say never, maybe I have, but I, I feel like I've been pretty free of whatever my kids want to do with their life um, and their dreams and supporting them in that, but also letting them work their dreams out as well. Like I'm not going to make their dreams come true for them and, and have them depend on me to make their dreams come true. I'm going to give them some support. Um, but I've just never felt like I've had any expectation on them. And that's been very freeing. It's allowed me to be free because that dissatisfaction that you might carry in that part of your life, that piece of the pie, could be big enough that it's holding you back. <laughs> what happened to my screen? I think I need like the connector there. Let's see if that'll really connect. So in that big piece of the pie, if there's a sense of satisfaction or dissatisfaction that you're carrying with you, and every time you visit it, it brings that dissatisfaction, or on a subconscious level, it's a very powerful dissatisfaction feeling, emotion in your life. I see people carry a big level of dissatisfaction about, could be parents, could be siblings, could be kids. Um, and, and that sense of dissatisfaction, so if we cut this up into a pie, let's say this is other people's, your expectations of others, that's a pretty big piece of the pie right there. That could be negating, you know, you, you didn't release that. You're carrying it with you. So in a sense, it's picking up the plow but you keep looking back as you're plowing. Any farmer knows that that doesn't work. I'm not a farmer, but I've heard the story enough and the principle behind looking forward when you're plowing and find a mark up, in the, up ahead and staying focused on that mark and not right at the front of the plow, the nose of the plow, or behind is even worse, right? You could not create straight furrows. So, um, this would be that sense. You just haven't released it. And burning something that you've written down around it isn't going to release it. It will help you to become aware of it. But writing it down and putting it in a, a fire, that doesn't get rid of the feelings and the neurons that you've associated and have developed in your neural net and on the subconscious level. This isn't going to get rid of it. How easy would that be if I could just recognize it, put it on a piece of paper and burn it and it's gone? No, that process can help you recognize it. And if in that moment you release it and forgive it when you burn it, and then, you know, you replace that weed with something else, you would have to come up with a new identity for yourself of how your relationships are with those people and rewrite that. Uh, you'd have to rewrite the identity of your relationships with those that are close to you. Because typically that's going to be, those expectations are with people you have that are close to you. Otherwise, the satisfaction is always going to rear its head. Right? So you'd have to rewrite the identity and make that a part of your template. Even with your business template, that's why I said I kept, you know, the three by five card companies in business. Because my template became... I wrote more and more things around my template. It would be around this area right here. 
I wrote more and more things around this, this part. And I've talked about this before. Uh, I don't know if it's in the recording that I did, but I would rewrite the new identity of myself in these different areas. And so my vision of myself got longer and longer. I just tag it on to the end or wherever it was appropriate because these have absolutely everything to do with who you are and how your business will grow, how your isogenics business will do. It may seem like it's not effective because here's business over here. Right? But it's totally related. It is absolutely related. Until you're free by the truth in all of these other areas as you become more free. I'm not perfect in these areas. I'm just better than I used to be. Okay, makes sense? Powerful piece right there. I didn't know I was gonna get into that, that on that level, but that's a very powerful piece. And it's one that could be very difficult for people. I know those emotions, but they're just emotions based on thoughts that you've made real. Remember, things, the one thing that's certain is things are always changing. And you can reevaluate what's serving you and what isn't. And you can reevaluate how you want to frame up the identity around that. It was the principles that gave me the permission to do this and the ease of doing this. The principles. I'm not attached to those emotions in the way that I frame them up. Some people are so attached to those emotions, they love those emotions more than they love the feeling of success that they could have in their business because their identity is around that. Who would they be without that identity and those emotions that are tied to it? Become a very powerful force in their life to keep them stuck. But the principles are there. It's like, at that point, that's why I said it became like math. It became more like math than it did like relationships. Because the way those relationships are framed up were from one perspective, not every possible perspective. And the principles showed me that there could be another perspective. Paradigms are not the absolute. You might make them the absolute, but the principles taught me that my paradigm and the emotions that I'm holding in every area is not absolute. And if I wanted to move forward in my own personal progression, they could be anything but absolute. So if I believe in progression, then I have to believe something about these dissatisfied emotions that I'm feeling because they don't belong in a progressive being. So that means I have to frame them up in a different way. I have to reevaluate them, reframe them up. And it was some of the other principles that helped me to, to do that, those understanding principles. Relationships are going to be some of the most binding, almost like, you know, like that steel trap that just can't be changed. But the more you read into and embrace the principles, the more empowered you are to make that still trap into liquid water that could move in any direction and then evaporate completely. All right, so I'm looking for the book. All right, so I don't like this Got background. Okay. So we left off with right around in this area. So the whole process of mental adjustment and atonement can be summed up in one word, gratitude. So how can you turn your relationships into a relationship of gratitude? Because that's a mental adjustment. See how the principle right there in what I was just talking about? The whole process of mental adjustment. And how does gratitude? So gratitude plays something with that sense of dissatisfaction that you have in relationships that you're a part of. So gratitude has something to do with that. How can you reframe that up? First, you believe that there is one intelligent substance. So, okay, I'm not gonna argue with that. Take it on, belief. I'm going to take that on as a belief. And I can, I can readjust that anytime I want to, if I feel like I'm getting on dangerous ground, but why don't I just go ahead and play at 100% here? Okay, done. It's a belief. One intelligent substance from which all things proceed. That doesn't harm me. I'm going to play along. What harms me is if I don't play along. You believe that 
who does that make sense? What harms me if, if what I believe right now is absolute and I can't take this on? That's what will harm me. From which all things proceed. If you believe that this substance gives you everything you desire, you believe that this substance gives you everything you desire. Okay, done. I believe that. And third, you relate yourself to it by a feeling of deep and profound gratitude. Okay, done. How do I do that? Well, we've been talking how we do that. Um, it's been scripted out for you on that template on how you can do that. And uh, many people who order their lives rightly in all other ways are kept in poverty by their lack of gratitude. So I just talked about a dynamic that may be holding you back, a sense of dissatisfaction that you're having in another area of your life. Have you noticed that about people that are really successful again and again and again? They just don't seem to be bothered by much. It doesn't mean that they don't get upset or that they don't lose their temper, but they don't stay there. There seems to be a sense of something childlike about them. Many people who order their lives rightly in all other ways are kept in poverty by their lack of gratitude. Now, the other side of that coin is, what about some people that are pretty amazing, but there's this sliver that they have. There's this moat that they have in their own eye that they just can't pluck out, and everybody knows what it is. Even though they're an amazing person and they give you the shirt off of their back, and they're the nicest person, there's this moat that they have in their eye that's negating. If they would just be able to pluck that one moat out of their own eye instead of the sliver out of everybody. They're not even trying to pull slivers out of other people's eyes. They're nice people. But everybody knows what that one moat is in their own eye. And a moat is like a two by four, like a four by four, way bigger than a sliver. And it could, and it's, and I could think of some scenarios, not specifically and not individuals that I'm thinking of, but usually with their kids, it's usually something about their kids or their spouse or politics. <laughs> that, ooh, that could be a big moat in somebody's eye where they're dissatisfied about politics. Politics, spouses, and kids. Those could probably be that biggest one for a person who has gotten everything else right. Everything else right. And they wouldn't be doing a template because if they understood the laws on that level to do a template, they wouldn't have that moat. They wouldn't have that thing in their eye, that moat in their eye. They would have learned how to uproot it and then replace it with something of a better identity. Something more to be grateful about. Like, how can I turn that something into great about that? Does that make sense? The person who's going around who has done everything right They've ordered everything rightly in their lives. They, they, they wouldn't understand the principles like we're understanding them because they would have learned how to take that moat out of their eye. So this person right here hasn't been exposed to the, the, the principles in a well-rounded way. They are just, they've learned how to discipline themselves when it comes to loving other people, when it comes to being a positive person, but they just haven't removed that one moat. That's very clearly in their eye. This would be somebody that, okay, so having received one gift from God, they cut the wires which connect them with him by failing to make acknowledgement. So it's easy to understand that the nearer we live to the source of wealth, the more wealth we shall receive. It's easy to also understand that the soul that is always grateful lives in closer touch with God than the one which never looks to him in thankful acknowledgement. So think about that moat and whatever it might be, they've actually taken God out of that picture with that one thing. So the soul that is always grateful lives in closer touch with God. So they might, you know, they might say God's will be done with everything else in their life, but in that one thing, oh, you talk to them, they won't even go there. They don't want to go to the seminar that's going to talk about that. They don't want to get vulnerable with that one thing. That's the one. Don't go there. Don't touch that. That's mine. And I'm going to build a wall around that. Right? But it doesn't serve us. The more gratefully we fix our minds on the supreme when good things come to us. So the more gratefully we fix our mind on the supreme when good things come to us, 
the more good things we will receive and the more rapidly they will come. And the reason simply is that the mental attitude of gratitude draws the mind into closer touch with the source from which the blessings come. So this was starting to teach me the thing that I was missing, staying grateful in that moment of obstacles showing up in my life. So the law of non-resistance was being taught to me right here without bringing up that name or that law, the law of non-resistance. I learned that from Hollywell in working with the law. Okay? So he's teaching me the same thing right here. Just like when I went to that dream workshop, the person that taught me how to set my dreams up didn't say anything about the law of non-resistance, didn't say anything about the law of attraction. Even though that word was in some of these books, that word is in some of these books that were written from the early 1900s, attraction. But that word wasn't used in my dream workshop. The law of non-resistance wasn't in there. The law of assumption wasn't work used in that, that workshop. But it was teaching me to put my life in harmony with them when the obstacles showed up. So that's what this is doing right here. So again, there's facts behind the results I was getting in my life. Science, the science of getting rich, there was facts. There were exact things that I could do in my adjustment of, adjustment of my behavior. That's why Wallace Wallace calls it the science of getting rich. Forgetting about science of getting rich, and as I read more and more books, I said, it's more like math. It's just like aligning yourself with these principles that have no feelings behind them. I have feelings and emotions behind, you know, the pictures and the things that I create, but this doesn't. And if I can just release and let go, that's why forgiveness is more about you than the other person. It gets rid of this part. Forgiveness gets rid of this part. Dissatisfaction. Forgiveness is more about you than the other person. If it's new thought to you that gratitude brings your whole mind into closer <clears throat> harmony with the creative energies. So remember, what did he say? That we're gonna convey the idea of our wants to the formless substance. So if it's a new thought to you that gratitude, so he's bringing in another dynamic to this conveying of an idea, this prayer in our heart. So if it's a new thought to you that gratitude brings your whole mind into closer harmony with the creative energies of the universe, consider it well. I love that little phrase right there. Consider it well. It's a phrase that I used a lot. I still use it at times, but it was a phrase that I used a lot with the word gratitude. Consider it well. And you will see that it is true. The good things you already have come to you along the lines of obedience to certain laws. Gratitude will lead your mind out along the ways by which things come. Gratitude will lead your mind out along the ways by which good things come. What is this right here? Gratitude will lead your mind along the ways by which good things come. Well, which ways, which byways, which highway? The left road, the right road, the higher road, the lower road, where do we meet at in the middle, right? Gratitude will lead you along the ways. These are the ways, awesome customers, awesome business partners, leverage that's built into our compensation plan. So you have production that's happening through leverage. And you've built that leverage in because other people are included in the ways that good things are going to come to you. All of these ways have to be there when it comes to isogenics. And you have to remain in that state of gratitude. So your identity, you have to have that state of gratitude for your identity with all these different ways. That's why you keep revisiting them on a detailed level, on a detailed level. And the moment you give up on this is the moment that you're going to let the environment suggest to you what the ways are going to be. I know it's not easy to maintain, but you can do it. And the results you're gonna get are gonna be the results that you want. So choose your hard. Living with the results you don't want, day after day, month after month, year after year, 
or living, doing the work and living with the results that you do want. Do you see it like can, gratitude will lead your mind out along the ways. I, this template I could not have created back in the beginning. It's looking back on the things that, you know, have created the results that I wanted in my isogenics business and in my life. How do they collaborate together? How do they create harmony? I, Attitude will lead your mind out along the ways by which things come and it will keep you in close harmony with creative thought and prevent you from falling into competitive thought. There's nothing about competition in that. There's nothing about competition in there. It's a win-win for everybody. It's value being added. And when I say go kick the tires, get back to this as quickly as you can. If you have to cleanse to get that feeling out, if you need to make a shake, if you need to avoid certain foods that keep causing you to get into that state of dissatisfaction and you're not willing your mind in the way that you want it to go, isogenics was a huge godsend for me to help me stay away from those foods and understanding what those foods were that would take me physically and chemically into a state of dissatisfaction. It's why I'm so disciplined 90% of the time, 99% of the time around what I allow in my body. Because what goes into my body can cause a chemical reaction, which causes my state to go into a state of dissatisfaction. And processed sugar does that for me. Refined sugar. And I would even say too much natural sugar does it for me. Uh, people will say, well, use agave. No, agave takes me there really fast, just like syrup would. I know it's natural, but for some reason, it causes a state of dissatisfaction in me chemically. So you got to learn what those foods are and be aware of them. I'm very aware of what sweeteners do to me, hmm. both chemically and, and naturally. All right. So all of that relates to this. Keep you in close harmony with creative thought and prevent you from falling into competitive thought. Gratitude alone can keep you looking toward the all and prevent you from falling into the air of thinking of the supply as limited. Other things to do that besides food, the people you hang around, learn that one real quick. The people I hung around and what they were talking about and how it took me out of harmony with the creative thought. Music can do it, TV shows can do it, movies can do it, uh, agendas can do it. All right, uh, I think it's in this book. It might be in this or in, in uh, uh, Wallace Waddle or in uh, Charles Hannell. Don't get involved with um, charities that are constantly uh, fighting poverty. That could take you out of a close harmony of creative thought around abundance. And that abundance is everywhere. doesn't make you a bad person to look the other way when it comes to poverty. You can still give to charities, but keep your mind focused in harmony with abundance, not poverty and lack. <clears throat> Could be a hard one for somebody's paradigm. Uh, I was listening to somebody the other day. I think, oh, in sales, let me just pull it up. Three things he always asked himself. Uh, is it right? Is it wise? Is it helpful? And is it profitable? Is it right? Is it wise? Is it helpful? Is it profitable? We should ask ourselves. So these maxims, wise maxims, maxims have, I mean, Willie, we've talked about this, uh, Malcolm, we've talked about this, you know, uh, maxims that we use, like the Jim Rohn maxims, the the um, Tony Robbins maxims, the Zig Ziglar maxims that we can fall to into our minds to stay in a, that state that's in harmony, right? So is it right? Is it wise? Is it helpful? Is it profitable? I've seen people fall in and out of isogenics because they, uh, oh, another word too that came to me and I shared it with uh, uh, Kathy Cooper on Saturday, imprudent, imprudence. 
I've seen people fall in and out of isogenics because they become too hastily, too rash in their decisions of changing their mind. Like isogenics is it, and that's the vehicle that it's going to do it. And then they become too hastily with, oh, wait, no, isogenics isn't it this week. It's something else. They're lacking direction, imprudence. See, that's teaching me something about a, that's, that's, a, that's teaching me something about a principle. It's teaching me about the part of the principle where I would mostly live <laughs> or where people mostly live. It's not living the principle. It's not living the principle. And I can learn more about the principle sometimes about learning what you're not supposed to do when you're living the principle. Lacking direction, rash, acting or tending to act too hastily. I've seen people do that with isogenics. Yeah, it was right because isogenics principally based is right. It is wise, it is helpful, and it is profitable. But in that week, it wasn't for them. And so they hastily made their different decision that was without due consideration. Now, that was just a lack of discipline and stick to and over rising above the challenges that they're faced with that are emotional and a chemical emotion. And it took them out of the game. And they're not going to amount to much in a big way in one thing. That's why I bring up Paul, this one thing I do. This one thing I do. What did he do? He preached the gospel, right? But that was his calling. If, if that's your calling to go preach the gospel, then make that your one thing and quit complaining about lack and not having enough and being in debt and your health not being great or other people's health not being great because now you're stepping outside of that one thing. If your one thing is the gospel like it was Paul's, which I'm gonna say it probably isn't, your one thing preaching the gospel, <clears throat> that was Paul's one thing, he was an apostle. He was actually set apart to preach that one thing. <clears throat> but for, for most of us, that's probably not the one thing. Our one thing is probably to go out and live the gospel and be an example of what living the gospel can do when we apply it to isogenics or whatever else it is you decide your vehicle is going to be. But if preaching the gospel is your one thing, then do it and quit complaining about everything else and everybody else. Hmm. That could, get, that could cause a little righteous indignation in me because you're imprudent. People act imprudent more, way more than they do with prudence. And that could tick me off because they act like they're an innocent victim in it and that it's somebody else's problem. BS. You're imprudent. Face up to it, okay? That's a big one right there, imprudence. That's one thing that Kathy Coover is not, and that's one thing that I am not. I chose an isogenics to be that thing, and when it got hard, I just dug deeper. And what I mean by digging deeper is I kept doing the actions that were required to build a successful isogenics business, but I kept working on finding that pearl of great price. That would give me the maxims to use in those challenging times. More serious troubles result from wrongdoing. That's where the more serious troubles come in. And that fits right there with these teachings. Be wise, what else did I write? This was my own personal study. I'll be vulnerable, see what I've got here. To be wise, we should avoid imprudence as well as abstain from evil. So that was in the book. So we should Avoid imprudence. He says most people fail not from abstaining from evil and failing there. It's their imprudence as to why most people fail. They act too rashly and too hastily. They don't give their decisions deep consideration as to what this decision I'm going to make right now. This type of wisdom is never outdated regardless of the progress we've made as a society. The devil will want to sneak it into society that, oh, those are the old ways. That's the old school of thought. Don't be, you know, that's so outdated. These things are never outdated. Never, ever, ever. The goal is to get the principle out of the books and into ourselves. Wisdom and righteousness are syn synonymous, just as our wickedness and unrighteousness behavior. 
and I would add ignorance. <clears throat> so wisdom, okay? So hmm. some behaviors which are wi wicked, <clears throat> some behaviors which are wicked rise up not out of ignorance, but of pride and ego in one area, overriding the wisdom in another. If the, so this is like the devil, he was cast out of heaven. You know, he may not have had ignorance, but there was an area, there was that moat in his eye that he just couldn't pluck out. And that one moat overrode the wisdom and the knowledge of the other areas. It overrode it. If the pride is, the, is great enough, it will blind the individual to the foolishness of their actions that everybody else sees. To me, why would the devil throw it all away? <laughs> because he stuck to that one area of pride that overrode the wisdom and the understanding of all the other areas. It blinded him to it, totally blinded it to him. And a third of the other host. But those two thirds, they couldn't be blinded. They were like, what? Are you kidding me? Why would I do that? So the great law of the universe is always progress and happiness. It's a win-win. And in this case, they are synonymous. Our sole purpose is progress and joy, but not a selfish progress or gratification, but a unified joy and progress in all things. So being as one, there is no but in any circumstance that righteously negates the greater good for the greater number of people. This is why it was righteous. Okay, so this is something that's more in my personal study, Nephi slay Laban. So somebody being slayed for righteousness, all right? It's not in life or in death. Supreme love is supreme power. And Christ suffered for all that we might not suffer. So wisdom must be, mo wisdom, most people respond with an invitation to be useful. Most people respond with an invitation to be useful. Some people are being useful idiots <laughs> versus empowered and useful producing much good and fruit. All right, we already talked. I think, Mary Jo, you mentioned something about useful idiots, people who are ignorant. It makes you feel empowered when you feel useful. But what is the greater good? All right. Going off on a little tangent there. Um, okay, we're at the top of the hour, so let's just finish up with something good here. Gratitude alone can keep you looking toward the all and prevent you from falling into error of thinking of supply as limited. And to do that would be fatal to your hopes. So I'm learning something here where I was getting stuck every other time. I went out of gratitude to ingratitude and dissatisfaction by now focusing on the obstacle. And what I learned was by staying focused on the fantasy in a gratitude way would overcome any obstacle. How? I don't know. But I learned that it would and that it would show up. The how would show up on its own. And as long as I could maintain a level of gratitude on the fantasy, that's what I learned that changed everything. And I started going from one magnificent win to the next. Was, okay, well, how do I focus on that gratitude in the end theme? Well, that's right here. How do I stay focused on gratitude in the end theme? That's this right here. And I learned that doing that, because you wouldn't necessarily stay in a state of gratitude. Like if you followed the book, The Magic, is that what it's called? The Magic? If you just read that book every day, it wouldn't build your isogenics business. But you're learning a very important discipline to always stay in gratitude for something. But the ways by which good things come is not staying in gratitude for something. You have to stay in gratitude for something very specific if you want a very specific end result. Make sense? So what he's saying right here was this was pure, this was the pearl of great price for me. Stay in gratitude. And I knew what my goal was when I read this book. Remember, this book was handed to me just after I got into isogenics in the first month. First or second month, this book was handed to me. 
So, and he'll be more clear on how we stay focused on the end goal. The law of gratitude is the natural principle that action and reaction are always equal and in opposite directions. The grateful outreaching of your mind and thankful praise to the Supreme is a liberation or expenditure of force. That was a big maxim for me right there. That was a big maxim for me. That my gratitude is an expenditure of force that's leaving me. It cannot fail to reach that which it is addressed. What is it addressing? God. What else is it addressing? All that one substance that is in the inner spaces of everything. And the reaction is an instantaneous movement towards you. What's going to move towards me? God? No, the thing that I'm wanting. Through what? All that infinite intelligence that fills the inner spaces of the universe. Draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. That is a statement of psychological truth. That was another maxim. Very, there's a lot of maxims that I drew from this chapter that were now going to help me to change my behavior. What did Sills say and what did I say in my personal study? That it's getting the principle out of the book and into me. How do I draw nigh unto God? I stay in a state of gratitude. How God going to, how's God going to answer my prayers? Not by waving a wand, but through that infinite intelligence that we're surrounded by. And it's going to start to bring things to me. All right, so I'm going to end right there. Um, let's open it up for any discussion, any questions, any comments. And you should be able to unmute yourself. If not, Dave. yeah. Dave, it's President Carter here. Good morning, everyone. Hey. I just wanted to be pretty quick, but uh, you, man, you show up here and you know Dave's the teacher that your heart is longing for. Um, a couple of just takeaways that I sincerely appreciated. Um, I'll be pretty authentic and vulnerable. We talked about um, the expectations of others. I've got a family member who that's exactly what I'm going through. And at first I was just like, well, I'm going to change my environment by excluding them out of my environment. But as I've you know, worked in my personal development here for a few years, I know that it serves me better to, to write the opposite of what's going on right now. So if I'm experiencing some sort of pain, I can write in our relationship is close. We, we enjoy each other. Um, we contribute to each other. You know, all the things that I'm looking for in that relationship rather than negating. And the other thing that I thought, I loved your, you had a, you gave me a big aha um, as far as what was the imprudence. And I'll just share with you all a few years ago, uh, the awesome Lenny Evans taught me to put, um, I have three core words of my I am statements that come up in my calendar every hour and I'll share them with you. I've shared them with them in the group. My first one comes up, I am courageous. My next one comes up, I am audacious. And my last one is I am tenacious. And that tenacious, if you need to go look it up on Google, um, tenacious says, tending to keep a firm hold of something, clinging or adhering closely. So I just love what you were talking about, that imprudence. If we have our direction, which I do, I know I'm adhering closely to the principles of what I need to do, including my IPAs, including loving people. So hope that helps. It just really draw that out of me. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's good stuff. No, absolutely. That's now you're taking on the behaviors during the day. Right. And you make me re remind me of something. I would read you guys, uh, the secrets of the millionaire mind by T Harvecker T Harv Ecker and A K E R or A E C K E R something like that. Um, the secrets of the millionaire mind. And he uses something along those lines, what you're saying, like with your I am's, like this is I am so happy and grateful is what it says on that sentence right there. You could also use, and Jojo, remind me, and I don't remember the exact words, but I desire, instead of saying I am, I desire, that's, a, that's like the step, a couple steps before I am. Or um, what was the other word that your mind just doesn't negate it? Um, I desire, I... Oh, you'll, you'll find it in the secrets of the millionaire mind. They're more congenial words to where your mind doesn't resist it. Um, Intend? I am is taking it head on, right? Deserve. I deserve. 
that, that might be one of them. Intend. Um, yearn. I yearn for. Th those aren't the words, but so, but those are like those kinds of words. I hope, I desire, uh, I, I believe. I, I can't remember exactly what they are, but they're words you can use instead of I am that help warm you up to the idea to where you're not, not that, right? It's just that stepping gradiently forward. And there's three words that he uses. Um, I can't remember what they are right now, but it, I'll, I'll look and then bring them up on the next, uh, the next one. But uh, anyway, yeah, good stuff right there, President Carter. Anybody else? Melissa? Yeah, Dave. Um, I just, <clears throat> excuse me. I just wanted to um, thank you. I got largest ha ah, drop moment in the first five minutes of this call, and that's when you gave us permission to squirrel just a little bit from our blueprint. Because I've been focusing now for six months. I have my blueprint detailed out. I have it both um, written out in script form in my journal, as well as three by five cards, my I am statements, and the one area that I always feel like liar, liar, is when it comes to, I am a three star. I am, you know, I'm grateful for this, you know, $2,000 a week. I have something in the back of my mind that negates it. And I actually broke down in tears Saturday because I was so angry at myself for not being able to fully be there and believe it and then when you said i could take that because i'm grateful i think I'm, I'm getting the gratitude in but it's that area that keeps sticking me and if i can take my blueprint and just tweak that one area and talk about the people that i'm building up and i have that in my blueprint but it's in a very uh it's it's i focus more on the money part and i think if i focus more on building up the people and, and I'm still going to keep my blueprint right in the front of my journal and keep checking back with myself in a couple of weeks and see if, if it feels better to me once I've been focusing on the people. So I just wanted to say thank you. That was absolutely huge. And it was an answer to prayer that I had on Saturday when I was having a really bad day. Nice, nice, good, good. Laura, I love that. Can I just add and one quick thing to yeah, that? Just, sure. Let me just add something to it real quick too, and then Jojo. Um, maybe try I desire to be a three star when you get to that point. It, and, but you, you got to get the emotion built up, right? So mm -hmm. I desire, it feels so good. It feels so right. And then that allows you to start creating the feeling like you're resonating with what it's like to be that, right? I desire, mm -hmm. but just saying I desire alone isn't enough. It's like, I desire, it feels so good. It feels so right. It's creating so much good in the world. And this is who I want to be. I desire this. And then you can get into that feeling of assuming it what it feels like to desire that, right? My word is being. So being a three star, being a, and so it's, it's the feeling of actually being it. So when I think of that, then it's, it's a different shift for me. So being, you know, being a one star allows me to whatever, because I am a three star. I desire being a three star because it feels so good. It feels so right. And then you go right, you might take that a little bit more and then go right into, I love my customers. They're moving me towards that because they're such amazing customers. Do you see the flow there? There's no resistance because it Absolutely. can't resist that. It's not a lie. You desire it, but you're still getting to the emotion and the harmony. And then you're going to create those customers that it just feels like there's no negating there. That's just a huge shift. Just yeah. that one little tweak is huge. So thank you. Well, and I'm still going you through the template with, with some people now. We're still like looking forward to the freedom day number and over skipping the stepping stone number. And the stepping stone number could be one more cycle than you're already getting. But it's that it's that piece that links it to the big piece and if you leave the little stepping stone out you can't leap the chasm at one time and so it's 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 it it re takes out that resistance of the ping pong of i'm a three star no you're not i'm a three star no you're not right it takes that piece out because it's just the, the next 
smallest step. And it can, can be whatever's your stride. Your stride could be five cycles at a time, maybe it's one. And, and the big challenge, super big challenge, is doing your template for six months and nothing changing. And you're doing it every day and nothing's changing. That could be so frustrating, so discouraging, and you kind of feel like, well, this doesn't work, this isn't how it is, I gotta go find something else to figure out why, you know. And then we start trying other things, you know, starting over with other things. It's a matter of finding, and, and I think that you, the reason at six months now, you realize that there's still some hangups that you have within you personally. And it's a matter of discovering those and you're willing to do the work, whatever it's gonna take. And that aha, right now, it's like I was saying with God, you know, maybe he holds some of these ha ha backs for us because we haven't quite learned what we need to learn yet and experience what we've needed to experience yet. Because I believe the spirit can download into us like a computer, things that would take us from one thing to the next, much more efficiently, much more effectively. But that would take away our free agency and that process of learning and growing as the individual, which God cannot do and will not do. There's just wisdom in allowing us to go through what we go through. But then all of a sudden, when that moment comes, right, there it is. And now the timing's right. So it is a matter of never giving up, but it's also making the adjustments. If you don't make the adjustments, six months from now, you'll be in the same place. And we are on the right track here. All of us are on the right track individually. And it is a matter of finding that, that one little principle that I'm not yet being obedient yet to on the level that I need to. That little adjustment, okay? And that could be a big change for you now, Laurel. That could be the one change for you that all of a sudden you're not negating it anymore. That little piece of the pie, you just figured it out. And that was the one thing in your eye that you needed to remove. So good job. Way to show up. Okay, anybody else before we end it? Good comments. Have you there. mentioned a Sills book. What's the, um There's Carter holding up the Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. That that book changed our lives, didn't it, Jojo? It added things to the dynamics of the personal repetition that you're doing every day. Okay. Uh, what did somebody ask? What book? What? Um, you mentioned a book by Sills. Was the author or? He's written a lot of books. I, I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a student of his. What, He's a great businessman, religious leader. Uh, or that one that I'm reading right now is it's in my room by my bed. Uh, something wealth it has the word wealth in it. Just Google him on Amazon, Sterling W. Sills, S-I-L-L-S. He was in uh, life insurance. Like I think that Napoleon Hill or somebody else was, I don't can't remember, there was a couple of people that were in life insurance that did learn these principles and took the, everything to the next level. S-I-L? Double L. S-I-L-L? Yep, S. Okay, anybody else? Okay, awesome, you guys. Thanks. I, I so look forward to Monday mornings. And uh, we'll see thank you tonight you, on you. the Zoom uh, tonight, 530 California time. And uh, that's it. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.